that Lizzo uses costs one hundred and twenty. Welcome to Learning English, a daily thirty-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Jonathan Evans, and I'm Ashley Thompson. This program is aimed at English learners, so we speak a little slower, and we use words and phrases, especially written, for people learning English. Today on the program, you will hear from Dan Friedel, Dan Novak, Anna Mateo, and John Russell. Later, we will present our American history series, "The Making of a Nation." But first. Here is Dan Friedel. President Joe Biden visited an auto factory in Detroit, Michigan, earlier this week, to bring attention to the push for electric vehicles. Old auto factories in the United States have to be updated in order to build cars with electric motors and parts needed for the change. Biden supports legislation that increases government spending in many areas in the U.S., called the Build Back Better Act. Currently, it includes billions of dollars to help renovate old factories and aid the communities that grew up around them. The proposed bill includes. Three point five billion dollars to change the old factories to build electric and fuel cell vehicles. There is three billion dollars for an auto loan program that should help people buy new electric cars. There also is a plan to have government agencies buy electric cars. The total cost of all the proposals might be fifty billion dollars. Biden went to a factory known as Factory Zero on Wednesday. It is operated by automaker General Motors, which opened it in 1985. It will be the company's first to be updated to make electric cars. There are 21 GM factories in the United States. Gerald Johnson is the head of global manufacturing for GM. Johnson said the factory is flexible, meaning it will be able to change based on markets, laws, and spending. If Americans start buying more electric cars, Johnson said. GM wants to be prepared. Biden looked at the first Hummer electric vehicles during his visit to the factory. Hummers are based on military vehicles and cost over one hundred thousand dollars. They sold well in the past, but use a lot of fuel. By twenty twenty five, GM wants. Twenty percent of its cars to be electric. Five years later, the company wants that number to reach fifty percent. I'm Dan Friedel. The American technology company IBM. Says that it has designed a new, very powerful quantum computer processor. The company's leaders made the announcement Monday. They said the processor or chip will lead to quantum systems performing better than traditional computer systems at some tasks within the next two years. Quantum computers use quantum physics to perform difficult computing tasks. IBM said that its Eagle computing chip has 127 qubits. A qubit is a basic measure of quantum information. Traditional computers work using bits of information that represent either one or zero. 
but qubits can be one and zero at the same time. Qubits could make quantum computers work much faster than normal computers, but they are very difficult to build and require extremely low temperatures to work correctly. IBM said that its new Eagle chip is the first to have more than 100 qubits. IBM said new refrigeration and control system methods that it learned building the Eagle chip will help produce chips with more qubits in the future. The company said it plans an Osprey chip in 2022 with 433 qubits and a Condor chip. With 1,121 qubits. In a few years, the company said it will be close to what is called the quantum advantage. That is when quantum computers are expected to perform better than traditional computers. Dario Gill is a vice president at IBM, and leads its research division. He said that quantum computers will not replace traditional computers all at once. In the future, he thinks some parts of computer programs will work on traditional chips, and some parts will work on quantum chips, whichever works best for each task. We believe that we will be able to reach a demonstration of quantum advantage, something that can have practical value, within the next couple of years. That is our request, Gil said. I'm Dan Novak. Church is a place where people may seek comfort during difficult times. It can be considered a sanctuary. A place that provides safety or protection. Usually, that safety or protection is meant for humans, not massive woodland creatures. But in the state of Michigan, a huge buck entered a church on the first day of hunting season. Hunting season there begins on November fifteenth. A buck is a male deer. The animals are prized targets for many hunters. In this case, the church served as a sanctuary for the buck by protecting it from hunters. Religious leaders at the church Grace Sturgis found the buck inside the church's main gathering room. A video the church posted on Facebook. Shows the buck walking around the church, then it climbed the stairs to the second floor seating area. Pastors Amanda and Luke Eicher and Justin Wicky blocked a hallway with large pieces of wood. They wanted to keep the animal away from the rest of the church. Amanda Eicher said of the animal. I was amazed at how big he was. The buck did not appear to have any gunshot wounds, but it was bleeding a little from what appeared to be cuts from glass. Amanda Eicher told the Kalamazoo Gazette. This buck, however, jumped through a window and back into the wild before anyone had a chance to get close enough to know for sure. Besides the broken window, the only other damage in the church was blood stains on the floor. Amanda Eicher said she and others found humor in the situation. We all need reasons to laugh, especially with the hard seasons from the past two years, Amanda Eicher said. I'm glad we could provide some laughs. I'm Anna Mateo. The music group BTS 
originally from South Korea, has developed a large international following. It recently won many awards at the MTV European Music Awards, including Best Pop, Best K-Pop, and Best Group, among others. Smooth like butter, like criminal undercover. In today's Everyday Grammar, we will explore some of the words from Butter, a popular BTS song. You will learn about linking verbs, similes, prepositions, and more. Let's start with a few important terms and ideas. Linking verbs are verbs that connect a subject to an adjective or noun that says something about the subject. Linking verbs include the verb be, as well as verbs related to senses, such as look, feel, smell, and so on. Consider this example. BTS is awesome. The statement links the subject, BTS, with an adjective, awesome. In this case, awesome means extremely good. A preposition is a word or group of words that tells you information about a noun, noun phrase, or pronoun. Common prepositions include words such as on, over, and under. But for today's report, there is an important preposition you should know about, like. Like, the preposition, and like, the verb, have different meanings. Like, the preposition, means similar to someone or something. Consider the following statement. He is smooth like butter. The pronoun he is the subject. The main verb, a linking verb, is be. The adjective smooth follows the verb be. Then there is the group of words like butter. In this case, the preposition like comes before the noun butter. Smooth has a few different meanings. It can mean having a smooth, flat surface. It can also mean relaxed and confident in a pleasant way. Regardless, the entire statement, he is smooth like butter, is a kind of statement known as a simile. A simile uses the word like or as to describe someone or something by making a comparison to someone or something else. In everyday speech, many, but certainly not all, of these similes involve linking verbs, as in, This song is smooth like butter. This candle smells like butter. Now let's listen to a few lines from the BTS song, Butter. Note that similes are the organizing idea for the song. The first line says, smooth like butter. The subject and main verb are not stated. If they were stated, one can guess the words would have been something like this. I am smooth like butter. This involves the subject, I, and the linking verb, be. Then another simile appears. Like criminal undercover. Once again, one can guess that the subject and main verb, the linking verb, be, are not stated. If the subject and linking verb were stated, the line might be something like this. I am like a criminal undercover. As the song continues, many more similes appear. Note that the preposition like introduces either a noun, as in butter, a pronoun, as in no other, or a noun phrase, as in a robber. Later in the song, Many of the similes do not involve linking verbs. To be clear, 
Similes do not have to involve linking verbs. However, many everyday structures do involve them. The next time you listen to popular music, try to find examples of similes. Make note of how the speaker uses the word like, and make note of the verb the speaker uses. Does the speaker use a linking verb with the simile? Or do they use a different kind of verb? With careful study and hard work, your ability to express comparisons in English will become smooth, like butter. I'm John Russell. Welcome to The Making of a Nation, American History in VOA Special English. On July 4th, 1863, a huge Confederate army surrendered at Vicksburg, Mississippi. Union forces had surrounded the city for 47 days. Food was gone. The situation was hopeless. The Confederate commander gave up. The terms of surrender were simple. The Confederate soldiers promised not to fight any more. In return for this promise, they were released on parole and sent home to their families. Never had Union forces won such a victory. 30,000 Confederate soldiers were now out of the war. 60,000 guns and 170 cannon were now in Union hands. The Mississippi River was now under Union control. Larry West and Morris Joyce continue our story of the American Civil War. The victory at Vicksburg went to General Ulysses Grant. He was named commander of all Union armies in the West. Then he was sent to Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Union army there had just been defeated in a battle along a little river called the Chickamauga. Now the Union soldiers were resting and reorganizing in Chattanooga. The Confederate line stretched halfway around the city. The Confederates had artillery on Lookout Mountain. They controlled every road into the city, except a rough one through the mountains. They had blocked the Tennessee River above and below the city, and they had cut the railroad. The Confederate general said he would let hunger force the Union army to surrender. Grant arrived in Chattanooga late in October. The city was full of hungry Union soldiers. They had been without supplies for almost a month. Grant wasted no time. He quickly sent troops to fight the Confederate force blocking the Tennessee River. He sent others to fight the Confederates blocking the road to the nearest Union Supply Center. Within one week, supply wagons were rolling into Chattanooga. Within a few weeks, the defeated Union Army was ready to fight again. General Grant sent his men against the middle and ends of the Confederate line at the same time. There were few Confederate soldiers at Lookout Mountain. That end of the line fell easily. The center of the line was along a low hill called Missionary Ridge. It held for a while. Then Union soldiers, acting without orders, forced their way to the top of the hill. The Confederate line broke. Southern soldiers threw down their guns and ran for their lives. The Confederate army withdrew south into the state of Georgia. Tennessee was completely in Union hands. 
the way was now open for the armies of the North to march into the heart of the Confederacy. It was clear that the South could not win the war. Too many Confederate soldiers had fallen in battle. None were left to take their place. Supplies were very low. There was not enough food to eat, no shoes to wear, and little left to fight with. No one held any hope of getting supplies from outside the Confederacy. The South was circled by Union troops and warships. All seemed lost. Yet Confederate soldiers refused to stop fighting. They would not surrender. The war would not end until the Confederate armies were defeated by military force. There was no question that the North had the military strength. Supplies were no problem. Factories were producing more than ever before. Manpower was no problem. Men continued to join the Union Army. Fewer than before, but still enough to make it a powerful force. The problem with the Union Army was its generals. Some were too careful. Some were unwilling to fight. Some did not know how to fight. The only general who seemed able to win victories was Ulysses Grant. That is why President Abraham Lincoln named Grant commander of all Union armies. Lincoln depended on him to end the Civil War. Grant went east in March 1864, five months after the battle at Chattanooga. He decided to make his headquarters in the field with the Army of the Potomac. He said he would not command from an office in Washington, but he went to the city to explain his plans to President Lincoln. Grant noted that in the past, the separate Union armies had moved and fought independently. He said they were like a poorly trained team of horses. No two of them ever pulled at the same time in the same direction. Under his command, Grant said, the Union armies would pull together. They would hit the Confederates with so much strength in so many places that the rebels could not stop them. Grant said all the armies would attack at the same time. Grant spent the month of April preparing for the big campaign. The main target, once again, was the Confederate capital at Richmond, Virginia. The Army of the Potomac had 120,000 men. It would move against Richmond from the north. General Ben Butler had 50,000 men. He would move against Richmond from the east. General Franz Siegel would bring thousands more through the Shenandoah Valley to the northwest. These forces were three times the size of Robert E. Lee's army near Richmond. In the west, William Sherman had three armies with more than 100,000 men. His opponent, Joe Johnston, had just 60,000. General Grant kept details of the campaign as secret as possible. Reporters asked President Lincoln when Grant would move. The president answered, Ask General Grant. General Grant will not tell us, said the reporters. Said Lincoln, he will not tell me either. The final Union campaign of the Civil War began on May 3, 1864. After two days of marching, the Army of the Potomac 
reached the wilderness. It was a thickly wooded area west of Fredericksburg, Virginia. That was where the Union Army had lost a battle to the Confederates one year before. That was where the two armies would fight again. The battle quickly became a blind struggle. The woods were thick. The smoke was heavy. The soldiers could not see each other until they were very close. Shells set the trees on fire. The wounded could not escape the flames. Their screams filled the air. After two days, General Grant decided that the wilderness was not the place to fight Robert E. Lee. He wanted to get around the end of Lee's army. He wanted to fight in the open, where he could use his artillery. So he began to march his men toward a place called Spotsylvania Courthouse. Lee moved his men as fast as Grant. When the Union Army got to Spotsylvania, the Confederates were waiting behind walls of earth and stone. For several more days, the two armies fought. At times, they were so close they had no time to load and fire their guns. So... They used their guns to hit each other. The Confederate line bent, but it never broke. Once again, Lee had stopped the Union Army. Grant refused to accept defeat. He said he would fight to the finish if it took all summer. Once again, he ordered his men to march around the end of Lee's line. Lee quickly pulled his men back to a place called Cold Harbor, not far from Richmond. There they waited. As he had done in the wilderness and at Spotsylvania, Grant ordered his men to attack hard. It was a slaughter. In less than an hour, 7,000 Union soldiers fell dead or wounded. Grant finally stopped the attack. The Union soldiers returned to their lines. They left behind hundreds of wounded men. For four days, the wounded lay on the battlefield crying for help, for water. Men who tried to rescue them were shot down. Finally, Grant and Lee agreed on a ceasefire to take care of the wounded and bury the dead. It was too late for most of the wounded. They had died. The battle at Cold Harbor ended one month of fighting for the Army of the Potomac. The campaign had brought it almost to the edge of Richmond, the Confederate capital. But Grant had paid a terrible price. More than 50,000 dead and wounded. Confederate losses were much lighter, about 20,000. General Grant was beginning to learn an important lesson of the war. The methods of defense had improved much more than the methods of attack. And that's our program for today. Listen again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. 